Good afternoon. Welcome to Learn at Home with VIA. My name is Jason Smith. I am a K through 8 teacher at Damascus and Preston Area Schools through Wayne Highland School District. Today, we are going to learn how to draw a Gothic cathedral, and then I'm going to teach you how to, to color in the rose window that's in the middle. Gothic cathedrals were started in 1100 AD, and they ran all the way up to the 1500s. And the styles did change throughout the years. So I'm going to teach you how to draw a simple Gothic cathedral where you can add in the detail that you want. I will show you what one looks like that I did earlier, but today I'm going to show you how to design one. Let me switch you over. Here we go. Okay. So I have my paper here, all right? And I'm going to show you what a Gothic cathedral looks like, all right? So this is what um, Gothic cathedrals look like. Uh, this would have been the front, or what they called the facade. Uh, the doors would have been at the bottom. Then there was a frieze, usually with some saints in there. Uh, and then the next step up was the next set of windows. Then a group of area. Um, now this is the um, Cathedral of Notre Dame, and which is in France. And unfortunately, a fire hit it um, about two years ago and they're in the process of restoring it. And then these two tall towers, which were the bell towers. All right, so what I'm gonna show you today is how we're gonna draw the front of the building. Now this is very detailed. Do you have to do this detail? No, you don't. But this is seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. You should be able to do enough detail to make it look like a Gothic cathedral. Big things in Gothic cathedrals. Uh, we've got some arches, okay? Um, the windows, the rose window is the big thing, and that's what we're going to be drawing today is that rose window. So I want you to think about finding something that you could use to make that window. And I do have something. I have a lid to a canister. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to fold the paper in half. All right, call this the hot dog fold. So I'm going to fold it in half. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the paper again, but I'm going to fold that half in towards the middle fold. So I'm going to fold it over once, okay? And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So I'm going to fold that over into that. And what I'm doing here is I'm separating the paper into quadrants, okay? So we're going to have the center area for our big giant door and then another door here and another door here. If you don't want to do doors, you can do windows. It's totally up to you. You are the artist. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to uh, make everything symmetrical. These buildings were symmetrical, always symmetrical. Um, there would have been the same on both sides. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my the middle area. I have a piece of paper as my, uh, I have an envelope that I'm using as a straight edge in case you don't have a ruler. And you guys have to decide on how far up you want this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a straight line across. Oops. And bring this all the way over to about there. Um, I'm going to think about drawing a little line here. And I'm going to draw uh, a line straight down from here. Make a, I made a mark, big deal. If you make a mistake, figure out how to make it into something else or you just erase it. Okay, so I'm going to draw from here a peaked line and a curved line all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but what if I couldn't do it? So I'm going to show you an easy way to. I drew that line there. If I fold my paper over, you can kind of see the line underneath. So I'm going to go back over that line with my pencil, and I'm gonna really hold it down. So when I open it up, what happens is I have the exact line on the other side. So all I'm gonna do is go back over that width. Now, I'm working on an uneven surface, so it might be a little bumpy. It is what it is. Okay, so I did that big door here, and I'm gonna do another door here, 
Well, then I need to draw another one of those lines. So a curved line down. This one's thinner. And I'm going to, I'm just going to draw it here like that. All right. So then if I want to do that again here, I flip it over. I draw this down, draw this down. And guess what I have? I have my other door over here. So all you need to do is just retrace. Okay. So, and my doors. I'm going to add in my freeze in the middle here. Okay, that's my freeze. Uh, and then I'm going to figure out where I'm going to put my rose window. I'm going to put it right in the center here. So I'm going to put this down. And I'm going to draw a circle, trace that for a circle. Okay, so it's perfect. Uh, I'm going to do a window on this side. So what I need to do is I need to figure out, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to draw another line straight across, just like that. And so we, what we're doing is we're creating, a, we're sectioning the, this off. The thing about it is you might not get your, your bell tower in. Um, I mean, you could shorten this up if you want to. We don't have to make this, this section right here. We can actually just say, okay, well, I'm going to cut this in half and I'm going to draw a line up. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw another line up. And then guess what we have? We have our two towers. So in those two towers, I'm going to draw um, over here. I'm going to draw uh, kind of this curved line. I'm going to draw one. I'm going to draw two. If you want to do more than that, go for it. And then I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to draw them over again. I know it's double work to do, but if you want pure symmetry, this is the way to do it. All right. I've seen other ways where people uh, we'll use a tracing paper, and then there's like there's a couple different methods to do, uh, but this is the way that I've been telling my students to do it. Okay, so we have the beginning of our building. I'm gonna pull that up so you can see it a little bit better. Apologize if it wasn't perfect. Um, and then I'm gonna draw a line around my rose window. And I'm going to draw in a window here. Flip it. Go over that line. Flip it back. There's that line there. So you have the basics of your, your building right now. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to, we're going to start at the bottom here and we're going to work our way up. Okay. Um, a lot of people work from left to right. I'm working from bottom to top. All right. And so I'm going to start in and I'm going to do some lines and I'm going to kind of come down to midway. I'm going to draw a line straight across. Um, these doors, have these big giant areas that are uh, decorated <clears throat> and they're usually decorated with all different kinds of designs. So scalloping, different, uh, just all different kinds of well stuff. And then in the middle, there's always a scene. So do you have to do a religious scene? No, you don't. If you wanted to pick a, an artist that you really enjoy or you want to do something like pop art, you could do that too. Um, you can create this cathedral any way you want, okay? So for right now, I, one of my favorite artists is um, Hokusai, and he did the wave. So I'm going to do mm -hmm. this w big, giant kind of wave in here. And I'm going to do another one back here, another one back here. So the cathedral of the wave, okay? So if I did one of these here, I'm going to do it here. And I'm going to draw a line over here. 
and I'm going to do those same kind of scallops up and down. You're just kind of mimicking the line that you're doing, so you don't really need to um, fold it over and fold it over, and that's up to you if you want to do. Um, and then here I can do maybe uh, some sort of tree. Uh, and so you do the same thing over here. And if you want to, you can, you can line those up and you can bring that down, that down. And then I got the tree here. And there it is. Okay. So you have to press down hard. You have to know that you're lining up to the right spot. And you're just pulling this, this thing out, okay? So I have this. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the doors. Um, usually there's columns in between. And there's columns in between here. And there is... This comes down, this comes down. And so your doors are here now. You can do them as straight doors. You can have them as rounded doors. I'm just going to keep them as regular. And I'm going to add in this little square here and here. And then I'm going to put in a big giant loop for a big giant handle. Okay. I'm going to do that here and here and here and here. And I'm going to bring down this like the tree is gone down and here. Here, okay. So you have this going on, and uh, we're we don't have to make the details yet. Uh, we're just kind of you know, if you want to, you can draw lines and then draw these lines straight down, and then you guys have, you know figure out what you're going to do in between. The one thing I I do always do is I I decide that it's better to fill in these spots. So I have something here, and here, and here, and here, and here, okay? And then I can decorate. Um, there's all different designs you can do. So I want you to think about what your freeze is going to be. They have people, all right? I'm right now just going to make it into just solid blocks. And that is really, guys, just to save time. If you want to, you can add in detail to make it more 3D. Um, you could do something like this, where you bring these lines down, these diagonal lines down. You draw a straight line across, straight line down, okay, and over, straight down, straight, or diagonal down, diagonal down, and then straight across. And that's creating like the big giant stone blocks. And these cathedrals are made out of. Primarily, they're made out of stone. They're, they're faced in stone, and then the inside, <coughs> excuse me, is usually made out of other materials. Um, so I am going to decorate. Uh, I'm going to put kind of this curved line here. I'm going to do it here as well. And then I'm going to do another one here and another one here. And, uh-oh, it didn't work over here. Oh, well. And then um, I'm going to do one here. Okay. And so, if I wanted to, I could create another line down like this, and like this, and the, here's the deal. It didn't quite work out the way I wanted to, but that's okay. Uh, you have to roll with the punches. you got to go with the mistakes. So, um, I'm going to make some more of those. And so, these can be whatever you want them to be. I'm kind of making this kind of a fantasy-looking... Um, cathedral. So I'm going to put in some stonework. The lines are going to go straight across. If you want to make them, you just bring your line or your pencil over. You don't have to go over the rose window. And then you're going to go over this way. And so this idea is for you to design this. Now, obviously, I only have 20 minutes to work with you today. Um, so how you finish your design is how you you know you think about doing this. You can add some columns in here and columns here. Okay. 
I do have one that I did earlier, okay? And just see how I did all these designs. I really had fun with this. I went to town with it, all right? Um, and so what I'm going to do with this last end to our, um, if you want to, this is a, a section that doesn't exist, so I'm going to cut it open. But if you want to, you know, if you want to do something, I'm just going to just fold it over. Okay, so it's like that, all right? Here's the big deal. It's the inside, all right? And so I am going to kind of separate this like kind of a wheel, all right? And I'm gonna add, I'm gonna separate here and here and here and here. Uh, kind of looks like uh, a game I played in the 80s where you, you bop different things. I can't remember what it's called. So what I'm gonna do is um, have uh, some tin foil, okay? And uh, what I do, and this is a, a method that I just found out and it's really a lot of fun. So you need a cup of water, and you need some tin foil, and you need markers, and water-based markers. So what I'm going to do on the tin foil is I am going to um, rub it. Now you'll notice that some of it, it's just bunching up, and that's fine. Um, so I'm going to start out with that, and I'm going to show you. I'm going to get my brush here, and get it wet with water, and then apply it. And you'll notice instantly that I have watercolor. So I can come in here, and I can actually add gently my watercolor, and I'm going to do this side red. And, and, and these are stained glass windows here, so I, if I wanted to, I could, I could put red down first. Here's the deal. It's like watercolor. It reacts just the, way, the same way. So if you wanted to, you could let it dry, and then you could come back in with another color. Um, I am going to put down some blue. All right, so I have some blue here, and I'm going to um, wet that. You can mix colors too, and I'm going to put down some blue here, and some blue here. Okay, dip it in, make sure it, I'm going to get some um, green. I love the green. So green here. Thing about this is, is you can let this dry and you can bring it back to life. It's just like watercolors. All right, so um, I'm going to add some green to here and here. And then I'm going to go with a purple. You can't use Sharpies. Sharpies won't work. Sharpies will actually, um, the, it's not going to react in any kind of water. So it's easier to use like a Crayola or um, a Mr. Sketch, or I'm using Prang. And I'm going to do the interior like that. Now, this is kind of dry, so if you want to, you can actually go back over and add in some designs, okay? Um, so I, I really wanted to color this area, and it's really neat because it gives this really nice look to it. And then what you could do is when you let it dry, you can go back over it with your pencil or get a sharpie and you can add in um, you, know, I'm sure. you can add in you know um, arches now this is still wet so the sharpie might what we call uh, explode out a little bit and that's okay if that happens um, and And then you can go in and start decorating, you know, the inside of a, a rose window is kind of uh, detailed. Right? So you, you can do that. And then the la very last thing you can do before this is all over, because this is about to end, is go in and trace over everything. I hope you guys enjoy this so much. I know I've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed really showing you what you could do, how you can make some architecture. I love architecture. I love architectural history, and I'm glad I could kind of show you just a little snippet of it. Great. Have a great day. And I really thank you for uh, joining me at Learn at Home with BIA. Have a wonderful day.
in college. I was an art history major uh, at the time of the Florence flood. And, that, and I became very aware of art conservation at that time. Not just as images, but as physical objects um, that had undergone various degrees of alteration and mutilation over the years. And I became very interested in this. I um, always study a bit about the artist first. If it's an artist that I don't know, and of course there are so many, especially in the Quest Collection, it's full of what you call small masters who are very good artists, but they're not household names. Some small masters, from the point of view of style, are technically simpler in the way that they're painted. That makes them actually easier to restore when you get to the retouching stage. If something is only painted in two layers as opposed to 12, um, it's, it's much easier to imitate. Even though painting is a two-dimensional image, in its physical reality, it's three-dimensional. It's very important for not only art historians, but also art restorers to experience the, you know, the, the, the actual texture of a paint, not just the surface texture, but also the history of what's happened to a painting over time. It can never be the way it was the day it was painted, because paintings start to change the moment they leave the artist's easel. The materials are not permanent. They, um, they undergo changes over time. Uh, certain pigments alter. Green turns brown or black. Bright reds can you know, turn blackish. Some pigments fade completely. They just become colorless. Details that are painted into dark colors, um, which an artist often paints using very thin layers, don't separate from each other as well as they initially did. They tend to blend and sometimes you can see, when you're working on a picture, sometimes you can see with a very strong light detail that has you know, completely disappeared. Paintings have the, you know, they have lives and all kinds of things happen to them. You can't help but impose something of your own time and taste on it. Paintings are always at risk when they are bought and sold. Dealers always want to do something to them to make them as attractive and as palatable as possible. It's not always a good thing, restoration. Sometimes benign neglect is the very best thing for works of art. I can easily imagine a scenario where the dealer decided that the, this bright red background was just too weird. It would not appeal to a buyer in 1930. Before we go, we're going to take a tiny sample of paint and then um, have a look at it in New York under the microscope. We can see the you know, relationship between the layers to confirm that this actually is a vermilion background. Even when you try as hard as you can, in a hundred years, if your restoration lasts that long, someone is going to say, that restoration was done in 2000. Yeah, I'm convinced of it. We're all trapped in the taste of our time. If you're aware of it, it's, you know, helps maybe avoid the worst pitfalls. The art is the art, and, and every single one of them deserves the same kind of attention, the same amount of attention, and every one of them deserves to be preserved.